Hey guys, Brian Collada here with Train by Tex. Uh, this video will be just a, like a video I've done in the past on the PicoScope software, but I want to just focus on some features that I've already explained, but I wanted to, to kind of demonstrate how they are effective for an entry level scope user. When I was uh, an entry level lab scope user, now this sounds like I'm getting old, but what I mean by that is when I was younger, uh, there were some challenges that I faced that um, kind of discouraged me from using the lab scope. Um, I didn't understand what I was looking at. Um, what was on the screen didn't make sense. It was you know, not laid out correctly. I didn't know how to make the adjustments. Um, and this, this dates back before when I ever even tried a PicoScope. I didn't even know they existed at the time. I was using another tool. I'm not going to you know, explain which tool I was using, but what I mean by that is I couldn't justify the need for the tool at the time because I didn't fully understand it. And what I want to kind of show here, show you here is with the scope itself, there are some features that you can do, even if you do incorrectly when you're making your capture, it's not hard to fix them without having to recapture and resample and everything else. PicoScope is very forgiving for mistakes, if you will, when you're making your capture. With PicoScope software and the power of the scope itself, there's many adjustments that you can make to your capture after you've already made it. And what I'm going to illustrate here is if you're not an advanced user of a PicoScope, say you just started using a scope, there's nothing wrong with that. And don't be afraid of, to do that. With PicoScope, you can make adjustments after the capture, even if you've made something that is a big mess. With the software and with the power of the scope, you can correct that when, when after you made your capture. Say you, you were scoping the car and the, the signal that you were on was the signal that glitched, causing the drivability problem. Even if you weren't looking at the correct scaling or time on that capture, after you made the capture, you can go back and make your adjustments to really analyze to see what happened. Okay, right here, I again, I have the, the scope in demo mode. There's, there's no secrets here. Uh, this is just demo mode. I'm not on a car. I just wanted to show some, some features of, of what's going on here. We have a whole bunch of time on the screen. The scaling isn't appropriate, I don't think. I don't know if that's the right word, but I don't, I don't think it's appropriate for what you want to look at. Crank sensor is in yellow. Injector voltage is in blue, injector current is in red, and then in green somewhere here there is the uh, ignition primary. So what we're looking at is a big blob of information here. Nothing really to analyze. Um, I mean, you can see all the, all the patterns are here, but you don't really know what's going on. You got a lot of time on the screen, which is perfectly fine for the way PicoScope is. PicoScope works really well with sampling a lot of time on the screen and then using the amazing, in my opinion, zoom feature of the scope to zoom in on a small window of, of time that's on your screen. That is an awesome feature, I think. With Snap-on and other products, it's kind of the opposite. There's nothing wrong with that per se, but they do things in the opposite direction. With Snap-on, you want to you want to scope your signal at your essentially most zoomed in view and then fill up your buffer and then zoom out to look at the larger picture. It's, there's nothing wrong with that, it's just different than the way PicoScope operates. And that's something to keep in mind when you're using either one of the tools. So what I want to illustrate here is even though you have this ugly looking waveform with some quick adjustments you can make this much more easy to analyze what's going on. Um, we're going to start off with this big yellow blob. That's probably the ugliest thing on the screen. Uh, that, to me, is kind of large on the screen. I'm going to maybe shrink this down a little bit. And like I've done in the past, uh, these vertical zoom buttons here at the bottom, there's one for each channel. I'm going to start with the yellow one because that's the ugliest thing on my screen right now. And I'm just going to shrink that down a little bit. 
I want to I want to be able to use most of the real estate of the screen here but not have it take up the whole screen okay so now we're looking at something that's a little bit more presentable let's spread these out a little bit blue is a little bit small in my opinion so let's go ahead and you know bump that up a little bit let's again use most of the screen that we have here so it's a little bit easier on your eyes to to uh, sample what's going on here so red again pretty small so I'm gonna just enhance that a little bit green I got all this room here all this white space let's let's go ahead and use that let's uh, vertically zoom out a little bit and then make your adjustments okay now I'm pretty much consuming the entire screen in what looks to be four equal sec sections here um, and now I can just zoom in on a, on a section of the waveform that I want to see you know pretty much one engine cycle and I got something that's much more presentable I can see what's going on if I want to zoom in a little bit more of course I can do that as well and get a better glimpse of what's happening and that's on the much presentable way of, of using your scope not just for making it look pretty on the screen to show someone but to help you analyze what's going on with the car okay one other cool thing you can do with picoscope and you can also do it with snap-on is using the uh, the view section here if you want to add a view click on scope and now I have two views here I want to go ahead and, and I want to add four okay I'm gonna add four views all right so we got four views here and what we're gonna do here is put one channel on each of these views we're gonna do a a is gonna be on that one B will be on that one and on this one we're gonna do channel C so we're gonna deselect all but C and then on this one we'll do D so kind of backwards order but you get the point there's a channel on each one of these views which is pretty cool so now I can use the entire real estate of each view and pump this back up to either 1.0 or I can use that hold screen so instead of your channels being potentially on top of each other they can have their own little happy window and then you can you know look at each channel in a larger format without having them on top of each other okay we're gonna go ahead and bump this up a little bit okay now another benefit here is you can another benefit here is you can zoom in on different sections of the waveform say I want to zoom in on just this part of that crank sensor and I want to zoom in on just that just this injector current event and I want to zoom in on let's say three injector voltage events and maybe you know two ign ignition events or maybe just one I can do all that independently on each channel which is pretty cool not many scopes can do that either and each one of them has its own zoom capability and scaling adjustments on each channel now say you get lost here you got all these things up and you want to you want to just get back to, to home but you don't want to lose your capture you don't want to have to close the scope out and start over you want to just get back to home okay so you got all these views up here and now let's say I don't want to look at this I want my scope to be back to normal what you could just do is you know right click on the view that you want to get rid of click close 
close close until you have one single view again and then just go ahead and turn your channels back on now I'm back to where it was and let's you know I don't have the scaling correct here like I, I did originally when I made the capture or, or even when I made it better to look at if I want to reset all I have to do is click reset view layout and what that's going to do is bring your scope back to the way the scope was used when you captured your signals. Now one other cool thing with PicoScope is if you want a quick way to spread out your waveforms and, and get them a little bit smaller and, and you know possibly scaled correctly sometimes it works really nice sometimes I think the the uh, scaling of it is kind of small but if you right click on the window here and click on auto arrange axes this is going to spread out all four of your channels and and it's got, and also going to make them in order of the channel itself you got a b c and d so that's kind of nice if you had a big mess on your screen and you kind of just want to reset but you don't want to you know restart your software or anything you just click on that and it kind of makes everything spread out for you um, again, this is like I, like I was saying before. The I think that feature is nice. However, it, in my opinion, it makes these these uh, each channel pretty small. Now, it's not hard uh, to 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 adjust this. You know, you can again ramp this up a little bit. Go to your next one. Ramp that up a little bit. A little bit too much. Uh, go to your next one. Ramp that one up a little bit. And I think the crank sensor I'm going to leave alone. And just, you know, spread everything back out. Just like I did in the first time. And then again, I have a nice presentable waveform here that I could share with somebody. Or, you know, like say I had an issue here where I didn't understand what's going on. I can get on, get on Facebook or a text message and... Maybe make a make a screenshot real quick of what what this is, and I got something that's really presentable, so they can look at it with me and help me diagnose this car. But what's not presentable is when you have a big blob of data on a screen. So, with a little little creature comfort features of the PicoScope, you can make something much more easy to help you figure out what's going on with the car. So thanks for watching. Uh, again, this was just a quickie. I've done videos like this in the past. You may already know this, you may already have seen this from us, but I just kind of wanted to illustrate that these features aren't just good for advanced users, but really helpful for people that are just starting to scope. You know, don't be afraid to make the wrong setting and then get a big capture on the screen and have it ugly. I mean, you're not going to have pretty waveforms when you are a beginner user. You're going to have to make errors and then learn from it. And with PicoScope, it's very forgiving for those errors that you're necessarily making. And I don't, I don't mean they're errors. I just mean it's not the most ideal setting that you may have. And just be aware that with the scope, those features can be corrected without much effort at all. I mean, it's very forgiving for entry-level users, which I feel is a huge benefit for people getting into scoping. So with that being said, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe us. You can find us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, of course. Um, if there's any topics that you'd like us to cover, uh, please leave comments in the section below. Uh, we're looking forward to make more content in the future. And with your suggestions, that, that makes it all possible. So, again, thanks for watching.